Early on July 11th, Aaron Burr and his second, William Van Ness, arrived on the New Jersey shore of the Hudson. At that same moment, Alexander Hamilton reached a dock on the New York shore. He brought with him a doctor and his second, Judge Pendleton, who carried the pistols. At 7 a.m., Hamilton's party reached New Jersey and set out for the woods. In a clearing, Burr was waiting. Judge Pendleton described what happened next. When Hamilton arrived, the parties exchanged salutations. The seconds proceeded to make their arrangements. They measured the distance, 10 full paces. They cast lots for the choice of position. They then proceeded to load the pistols in each other's presence. Once Hamilton and Burr had loaded pistols in hand, the rules mandated that they take up positions 20 feet apart. When the signal was given, they had three seconds to fire. It was at this point that the two seconds gave completely different accounts of Hamilton's actions. According to Judge Pendleton, Hamilton had made a fateful decision that it would be morally wrong to shoot at Burr. He had made up his mind not to fire at Burr, but to fire in the air. But according to Burr's second, William Van Ness, Hamilton showed every sign of intending to shoot his rival. While his second was explaining the rules, Hamilton raised and leveled his pistol. He then drew from his pocket a pair of spectacles and observed that he was ready to proceed. Van Ness claimed that Hamilton shot at Burr, but missed. Whatever Hamilton's actions, both seconds agreed that after Hamilton fired, Burr stood unhurt. Now, Hamilton's fate was in Burr's hands. The fire of Burr took effect, and Hamilton almost instantly fell. Burr then advanced toward Hamilton with a manner and gesture that appeared to be expressive of regret, but without speaking, turned about and withdrew. The doctor was not optimistic about Hamilton's condition. His look of death I shall never forget. I observed to Mr. Pendleton that the only chance of reviving him was to immediately get him upon the water. 